Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back. I'm so glad you are joining with us. If you're brand new to the Something Good podcast, welcome. We're so glad you're here. If you've been a long time listener, we're glad you're here too. And I just want to encourage you. We love hearing how all of these stories are encouraging you. And I just want to encourage you, if you could take a moment to go rate or review this podcast wherever you podcast. It means so much to us. And it really just with all those little crazy algorithms behind the scenes helps our little podcast and our little fear of the world be seen a little more. And again, you know our heart around here. It's not about Will and Sarah Good. It's about just sharing stories and what God is doing and spreading some good news all the time. So thank you for being here and being a part of our little podcast world. So today we're going to continue our conversation with Ron and Debbie Cathcart. If you remember, we've been in a little mini series all about relationships. So if you are, if this is your first time and you have not heard part one of our conversation, Ron and Debbie, I want to encourage you to stop, go back to episode 24, listen to the first part, and then come back and you'll be ready for today's conversation. But we're going to jump back in to talking with Ron and Debbie. Where we left it, it was a little dicey. If you remember, Ron and Debbie were in the midst of their first kind of big married, let's just say fight, a little bit of a tiff. And so we're going to pick back up and see what happens. So here we go. Come along with us. Here's my conversation, part two with Ron and Debbie. But I'm also in my selfish brain thinking, danger, danger, right? Like, this isn't just about me playing basketball tonight. I'm going to lose some territory here. I'll never gain back. (laughs) You couldn't give in, is what you were saying. But I'm just telling you, that's exactly right. (laughs) But but we're just keeping it real here. So, like, I mean, this is our first week of marriage, and I am like thinking, Whoa, 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 right? And so I, I, and you know me well enough to know, and I'm not proud of this, and I have matured in 33 years, but in that moment, I'm like, oh, no, I'm not no, going to lose didn't. this battle. And so I, I'm like, I'm going to the gym. Yeah. And I went out. And so she was in her pajamas, by the way. She was yeah. already ready to have dinner, snuggle up, and watch a movie on the yeah. couch. And I go get in my truck. And as I'm sliding into my truck, on the other side of my truck is my wife sliding in, in her pajamas. (laughs) And she says, if you're going to the gym, I'm coming with you. (laughs) And in that moment, I'm like, the only thing worse than me not going to the gym tonight would be going to the gym with my wife in her pajamas. (laughs) And so I got out of the truck and I came back in and I'm like, okay, I'm, we're going to, you know, snuggle and watch a movie, but. Next Tuesday night, I am going to the gym, right? Because I'm like trying, and and I say that, and of course, we've both learned, like, we've right. learned so much about each other in the 33 years, but to speak to the question that you're asking, like, we both went into marriage, yeah, and it was two very strong-willed people yeah. that had different views about yeah. what they thought it was supposed to look like and yeah. how it was supposed to be, and yep. and we, yeah, we did some battle of trying yeah. to figure that out in our early days of marriage, and it was not always pretty. That's good. Well, I want to talk about that a little more, because one of the questions we did get asked was, they were saying, hey, I don't think people talk enough about how selfishness comes out in marriage. And you just said it. I mean, it's two, in any relationship, you're taking two totally different people with two totally different ways of being brought up, two totally different ways of set, um, expectations, two totally different sets of personalities. And it can, and then you stick them in a house. I mean, it's like why we all love reality TV show, like why Big yeah. Brother or Survivor is such a great, because you're like, who's going to, and when you put strong willed people, yeah. Um, because I'm a strong little person. I get that. It's like, I'm going to outlast you, just outlast you. Right. So like I'm, one of us is going to have to give. So how have you guys, talk a little more about how you've really navigated some of those things to go, hey, I know Ron needs to go be alone, even though I don't understand that. I'm going to let him or you go, I, you know, I know I need to go do these things or Debbie just wants to be with me and that's not wrong either. How have you guys worked through? In all honesty? I think we still have to work through it all the time. It's not. It's not like we work through that, and now now we're good with it. No, that's good. I still struggle at times with. Yeah. Okay. And how honest can I be? I told you. you Bring (laughs) it. Bring it. We we have no secrets. Bring it. And and we're good. I mean, so you can be good and still have issues. We are good, but there are times where you know. 
He loves, and, and I, it's not that I don't want him to have those fulfilling, great times, yeah. but he's an alone, he, he can be alone. Mm-hmm. I am a companionship. I want, yeah. and, and God gave me four boys and I'm so grateful, but I don't have that girl to have that companionship right. with when he right. goes off and does his boy stuff yeah. or his yeah. alone stuff. So um, I think it's something we continue to have to work through sometimes where I have to talk to God about it and um, it's good. and he shows me my selfishness or mm-hmm. he he opens my eyes to the fact that this is something my husband really needs. Yeah. And and sometimes I you know even if sometimes I still think he's wrong. I think he shouldn't do that. Yep. It, he you know I think maybe and and I know he on the other hand's probably yeah. thinking I'm being selfish. So I just but I we both have to let go of yeah. that and say God it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. It it matters that we display your spirit yeah. and and the love yeah. and just the grace that you have given yes. us. And so um but I I guess I just wanted to say it's not something that mm-hmm. We're all done with that. Yes, yeah. we figured That's, out how to navigate that, yes. and now we're good. We because, never struggle with that anymore. Yes, we figured it out because we haven't. I mean, so Debbie, what you're telling me? Moments where I mean, um, there are. I, yeah. I remember uh, last year at our anniversary, he had he had just gone to baseball. Oh yeah, camp with yep. with yep. his friend, which is such a blessing, such a you know fun thing that he gets to go to the. Cardinals yeah. fantasy camp, and yeah. then he had you know been on a trip with my brother, and I'm like, when do I get a trip? And I remember just saying, it's my turn. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and so anyway, and, and I mean, a lot of the things that he had gotten to do were a blessing, you mm-hmm. know. But um, we do, you know, we still have to talk through those things, and then you know. Sometimes it's me. I just need to say, "Hey, you know what? I and I am thankful, but I have to. I have to look um, and think. It's it's not about me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyway, that's hard to I do. Um, Ron, do you have anything to yeah. add? Yeah. Well, I I think so. Yes. First of all, um, just so you know, my wife and I are getting ready to go on a ten day trip. I don't always go running around with my. Uh, my other guy friends, but I do do that. I, I think she said a really key phrase and it's let go. Mm-hmm. So anybody coming into marriage, right? Like we all need to mature. We all need to change. There are things about us that need to change mm-hmm. as, and hopefully that never stops until you take your last breath. You're yeah. always mm-hmm. growing and maturing. Yeah. But I, but I also think that a lot of times you come into marriage thinking that you're going to change the other yes. person and we are all who God made us. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there are things that we all need to change, but then there are some things that you have to let go. Mm-hmm. And so there were hills that we were probably both willing to die on 30 years ago Yeah. that now we're like, we're not going to die on that hill, right? right? And so, and and it's a That's give good. and take on both of our parts. We are very different creatures. My wife is the greatest people person I've ever seen in my life, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I tell people all the time at Two Rivers, she's my job security because everybody <laughs> loves my wife and they do. And That's she true. is a marvelous people person. But most of the time she gets her energy from like, bring me some more people. Mm -hmm. And I am exactly the opposite. I love people, but at some point I'm like, I have to pull away to recharge my batteries. And that has always been kind of a source of uh, contention because she doesn't understand me in that area. And I don't understand her in that area and I'm never going to, and she's never going to. And so we've kind of had to just let go of that and figure it out. And we do a lot better at that now than we used to. I am much more of a people person now than I used to be. And I realize how important that is to her. Yeah. And she realizes that, hey, every once in a while, I need to put my dog in the back of the truck and go <laughs> spend 24 or 48 hours up at the farm. Yeah. That's how I recharge my batteries. And so we've gotten a lot better at at that. Um, but as she said, we still like, we work on that all the time. Yeah. Yes. And here's here's something else I would say really quickly in this whole thing we're talking about. 
any marriage, right? Like you're always going to have these issues. And mm-hmm. and what Satan loves to do is he yep. likes to take all these differences, differences of how we recharge our batteries or, yep. oh, I'm, you know, that kind of hurt my feelings a little bit yep. that you did that and didn't do yep. this or differences about raising kids and how yeah. you discipline kids and what they can yeah. do and can't do. And yeah. what, what I've learned over the years is that Satan likes to take those differences between a husband and wife and then escalate them into something that can be awful. Mm-hmm. And... um what what we've had to realize and even have said this to each other at at different times usually when we're making up with each other is hey you're not the enemy and I'm not yep. the enemy right like yep. I'm not your enemy and you're not my enemy it feels like we're enemies right yes. now because we've let this thing yep. get us sideways with each other but we have to come back together and say I love you mm-hmm. and you love me and I know yep. you're for me and you know I'm for really you really good mm-hmm. and you're not the enemy and I'm not the enemy yep. there is an enemy yep. and he's got us all jacked up in this yes. right like yeah. but, so and yeah. I think another thing is I mean from day 1 we and I'm sure other people have said this, but I mean, divorce was yeah, never that's good. Talk, a yeah. thing yeah. that we would even entertain. And I've never entertained it in 33 years of marriage, even yeah. on those days where I thought, how am I going to endure this for the rest of right. my life? <laughs> and I'm sure he thought the same thing, but it, it I love divorce it. has never yeah. entered my mind. Yeah. So... And I love Jesus, and I want to live to please Him, and I know that's my husband's heart too. So, in those times, yeah, when you are miserable, what you do is you run to God and say, "Help mm-hmm. me, help me." And then He takes me to, you know, uh, that's good. First uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen, where it says, "Love is patient. Love mm-hmm. is kind. Love does not seek its own way. It does yeah. not keep records of wrong." Yeah. And I read that chapter, and I'm like. Okay, God is not calling me to a feeling. He is calling mm-hmm. me to an action. And um and that is reality. He has yeah. called us to love mm-hmm. like Christ has loved us. And so that's a big deal. I think um I could just say that. And then he showed me and sometimes it's still hard because in my mind, the perfect marriage for me is me and my and and some people are going to say, "Oh my goodness, you would not be a fun person to be married to," <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. But but in my mind, the the greatest marriage ever was we would get married, we would do everything together. Yeah, we would go to work in the morning. The we'd get home in the afternoon, and we'd go hang out and do this, and then yeah. we. That we would just yeah. be together, and, and we would do things and serve other people, but right. everything would be together. I, I just, that's, in my mind, that was the beautiful picture of. Yeah. And that's, Ron needs his alone time, and he needs mm. his space. But as as the years have gone on, I've seen how beautiful that is, because it's freed me up to so many other mm-hmm. relationships that I needed to invest in and yeah. be in, and um, also... I've appreciated. I mean, he couldn't do what he does. He couldn't speak, and and to me, he's the greatest speaker, <laughs> preacher ever. I would second that. I like. I, to I just. I mean, I think he's and he's an amazing man of God. Let me just say that there. I mean, he is the greatest man I know. He truly is, uh, in all ways. And um, he couldn't be that man if I was possessing every yeah. moment of his time. Yeah. So so I think God knows what we yes. need and yep. he knows he knows a plan that we don't see. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. um we just walk in that plan and um I love it. It's beautiful. So anyway, that's good. Well, I'm going to switch us gears a little bit because the time always goes way faster here than we realize when we're going. But I want to talk for a second. You you guys have a lot of, you got four kids really close together. I'm going to actually jump though to now your kids are adults. So you kind of went through all those middle years of having kids, raising kids, and 
that could be a whole podcast episode of just how to <laughs> stay married and have kids and have four <laughs> boys very closely <laughs> together. Um, but what is marriage and life looking like now that you have adult kids, you're getting to be grandparents, which I know is super fun, but just like how, how, what was the change like from having kids in the house to now, like you're kind of back to just the two of you? Is it going good? You going to answer? Go you ahead. can. No, go. go. Ahead. Oh. I, I want, I'm kind of interested to see what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I absolutely, I mean, I love it, but I mean, our, our lives are so full. That yeah. yeah. I really, you probably don't feel like you're missing it. Like I that. don't, I don't feel like, I mean, initially, as they leave, you know, yeah. it's yeah. like this sadness, yeah. but you kind of come am- back to the other side of getting to have it grandkids and people around. I think what she's saying is we really don't miss our kids that bad. No, (laughs) No. I feel like that's fair. We 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 love our kids, but Mm -hmm. I so and and, but I and I think this is for where we're at. And we've because so like we are right. Like our kids are all grown. We've got grandkids now, Um, and so we talk about this. There's a couple things that we talk about for what does what does the next chapter yes. look like for yeah. us? So one of them is we want to serve our faces off. Mm, uh, like we, we want yeah, to serve yeah. people because we, we are, we're at a great place. We don't have the responsibility yeah. of raising kids anymore. Yeah. And so we are at a great place where our schedules are more flexible, um, but our calendars are full all the time. They are. <laughs> and and I, don't, I don't say that begrudgingly. I'm like, there's so much to do and there are yeah. so many people to love on. And so like, that's one of our things that we've talked about is what does this look like for us? Mm-hmm. And it's, Hey, we want to serve people and we want to serve people. Well, we want to serve our kids. Well, yeah. she does. She keeps our grandkids and that's a blessing, but it's work too, right? To yeah. keep grandkids. And, and so there's two days a week where she's keeping grandkids, which is awesome for us because we love them and they're spectacular. Um, but we were keeping filled up our yeah. time and energy. Um, and so we're using this next chapter to like say, hey, we can serve and we can, and a lot of that we can do together. Yeah. And so we serve. And then the other thing that we've really talked about is um, we see sometimes when people get older, like I don't know if they were all busy raising kids and stuff and then the kids go away and then it's like they don't really know each other or don't even like each other that much. And so we've talked about like we want the we want to end well here Mm -hmm. and we want it to be sweet all the way to the end. And again, I hope Mm -hmm. the end is like, you know, I'm only sixty, so it's not like I'm gonna die next week. I could, but like we still probably have a lot of time left here, but we want it to be sweet, Mm -hmm. right? Like we don't want to be going at each other. We don't want to drift away from each other. We want this to be the best. Like this is kind of the, the, the whipped cream on top of the (laughs) dessert, if you would, right? Like we've spent all these years and raising these kids and now we're at this really beautiful spot where we've got grandkids and we're loving our kids and our grandkids. We're in a great church. We're loving people and just trying to make sure we love each other well, serve each other well, serve other people well. And it's, it's actually, um, I mean, I love where we're at in our marriage right now. I think Mm -hmm. it's good. And, but, but again, even that, like we talk about, Hey, we always want to be sweet to each other and treat Mm -hmm. each other well. And, um, and and we work on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. So I've got a couple listener questions to ask you guys, okay? So here's the first one. And we've talked about relationships and we're kind of having a marriage theme, but we also want to, I think all of this advice is just great for somebody who's waiting or just single or regardless of relationship status. But we had somebody asking just what what advice would you give to somebody who is currently single, um, whether they're younger single, like they're high school, college age, or just for, you know, whatever life choice right now, they're not, they're not in a relationship. What advice would you give to somebody just waiting and in that season? Debbie, you gotta, I just, I mean, I say just learn to walk with Jesus and be Mm -hmm. satisfied with him. Yeah. And, um, I think that's the greatest thing you can do is is learn yeah how to gain that satisfaction in your relationship with Christ and then and 
and seek, you know, seek good relationships yeah. and, and watch on and befriend yeah. people that that have those relationships. So, Ron? Yeah, well, so there's this old Rocky movie, Rocky Balboa, right? <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, he looks at his gal, Adrian, and he says, you complete me, you know, Adrian. And uh, <laughs> what I would say is to any single uh, young lady, especially mm-hmm. guys too, but young ladies who are maybe out there single and thinking, oh, I need a man. Uh, there's no man out there that will complete you. Mm-hmm. Um, and That's in good. fact, a lot of times because us guys are selfish and it takes a while for us to figure things out and to figure out how to be a servant and it takes our brains longer to develop and all those things, you may be jumping out of the frying pan into the fire, right? Like you may <laughs> think that dude's going to complete you and then you'll you'll get him and then find out, oh no, now yeah. I've really stepped yeah. in it. And so I, I think what Debbie said, right? Like you have to figure out how to be complete in mm-hmm. Jesus mm-hmm. by yourself yep. and not be looking for another human being to do that. And if you will do that, then when God does send the right human being along, yeah. you will be much better prepared for it. But if you're just sitting back thinking, oh man, my life won't be complete and I won't be happy until I get a husband or a wife, yep. I just think that's a I think that's a flawed mindset. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I would okay. say do everything you can to walk with the Lord so that if and when the Lord brings somebody along, you are the best version of you that That's you can good. be for that person. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, here is another one. Um, how do you keep the fire going after so many years together? I think that's a great <laughs> question because that is a big... How do you keep that spark? How do you guys still want to spend time with each other? My husband is the best at that. <laughs> I, you really are. <laughs> You keep the fire going uh, literally and figuratively. Yeah. He's built a lot of fires at the fireplace oh, actually, for you. Actually, you're right. I, I, what, yeah. I See, my mind wasn't even there. He's no, a great <laughs> fire builder. <laughs> and we have a fire just about every evening How do you throughout build the winter. Other fires, Ron, but give the but G version of this. <laughs> he is the best at that. I mean, he he's he makes me laugh. Uh And probably he sickens some people at Two Rivers because he's all, but he's that way at home too. I mean, every morning when we wake up, he's like, oh, look at you. (laughs) Where did you come from? (laughs) Can't believe I get to wake up next to you. And I mean, I still feel that way after 33 years, by the way, just so you know. He makes me laugh and, and he, constantly um, pumps me up about myself, even mm. though I'm like, you are a dork. But anyway, he's he's precious at, yeah. because, of course, what woman doesn't want to hear those things Absolutely. about themselves? Absolutely. So anyway, uh, but he is... He is great at that. So That's good. Uh, yeah. Ron, I don't know. Well, so this is this is probably going to sound corny or like a canned answer, but <laughs> it, I think th- I think this is the truth. I'm going to say this. I don't know if she'll agree with me, but I really do think at 33 years we are more in love than yeah. we've ever been, and yeah. that and I'm I that's say true. that that's true with all humility. Like, thank you, God, that that's yeah. true. Yeah, but we know each other better than we've ever known each other. We're more comfortable in our own skin than we've ever been. We've climbed some mountains and fought some battles together along Mm. the way, and you can't do that without getting closer together. And so I just, I mean... I don't have to light any artificial fires, I guess is what I'm saying. I mean, we, but, and, and, it, uh, cause I really, I'm, I'm head over heels in love with my wife to this yeah. very day. And so, um, I, I would say this. I think one of the important things okay. is that you, you don't stop serving each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, yeah, like I, so when I was 33 years ago, the only person I was serving was me. I yeah. was like, that's my girl, but it was yeah. all selfish on my part, right? Yeah. Like I'm, I want to win the prize. She's the prize. <laughs> and there was, I, I was not standing there on my wedding day mm-hmm. saying, I want to serve you the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, and now I can tell you 33 years later, I want to serve my wife yeah. the rest of my life. And, and I'm, again, I hope that doesn't sound like some well, Sunday and, school answer. And, and I really do. I want to serve does. my wife. He, and and I want to serve him too, and he does a very beautiful job of serving me. But I would just say, I mean, it's it's not just the words that he says, like when I was saying, you know, yeah. wake up. But I'm 
through the years, I've watched him love our kids, love, you know, and one of the most beautiful things is you get older and there's mm. other, you know, he has loved my dad through mm. his condition with Parkinson's so well. And, and that's beautiful. That, yeah. that lights a fire in you when you yeah. watch on and you watch your husband serve and love mm. people. Uh, it lights a fire when yeah. he prays with me mm-hmm. and uh, when we share that connection. And so um, it's not just those, yeah. you know, those um, words and right. the lighting the fire physically, yeah. but it, it's just, it's actions that speak so loudly that keep the fire lit. Yeah. That's good. And loving other, you know, loving the people you love well. And mm-hmm. when he loves the people I love, mm-hmm. and he loves them too, but, you yeah. know, when he does that, it's it means everything. Yeah. So. That makes a lot of sense. You t- you said something, Debbie, I want to make sure we touch on kind of as our last thing to talk about here. Um, just in your relationship, you guys both are believers. You've given your whole lives to just serving God. Um, You have tried over 33 years to kind of make Jesus the center of that. Can you just talk a little bit about how you guys practically kind of do that, what you guys do together or individually, just to kind of make sure that you're encouraging each other in your faith, in your relationship with the Lord, but that you guys are kind of keeping that together also central to your marriage? Do you want me to talk about that? You? Uh, you can start, yeah. I, and then I'll interrupt you. Okay. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Perfect. I well, <laughs> love it. Well, um, so uh, I'm not a big formula guy. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so I would say that a part of the answer to your question is, and you know my saying at Two Rivers, Jesus is the lead story. Mm-hmm. Jesus really is the lead story of both of our lives, our home, our marriage. And that's yeah. not just a slogan, but it's true. So mm-hmm. like... Debbie loves Jesus. I tell people all the time she's one of God's favorites. I just get in on the overflow of that. Yeah. But it, it is really true. Um, and and I love Jesus. And so, like, it, it's not something that's mechanical. I mean, it's just there. It's who yeah. we are. It's what our home is built on. Um, some of the things that we do, though, is um, it, we pray together pretty much every night. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a change, like you were asking, since kids are grown, that has been yeah. so beautiful and yeah. fun, is we get up in the morning and have coffee and read the Word together. That's you know? cool. So, and and those those were things that we really couldn't do yeah. when the kids were younger, yeah. and, and it's life changes, and so some of that, but... Yeah. You on. guys pray together every night. I mean... Yeah, so so every night, um, and, and I mean, you know, there may be a night where we, we get in bed and we're talking, or uh, right. we actually, for a long time, did not have a TV, for a long, long time, didn't have a TV in our bedroom. We actually do now, so every once, because you just, like, barricade yourself in there. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So every once in a while, we won't if we're watching something and one of us falls asleep, but pretty much every night we pray together. That's just mm-hmm. real important, and, and again, I would say... I didn't do that when we were younger, mm-hmm. and that was stupid on my part because that's, number one, it, it strengthens your marriage. Number two, yeah. that's a part of my wife's love language, right? Like when I pray with her, she feels very loved, Yeah, and and that's that's what I should be doing, and it took me a long, long time to figure that out. I didn't do that for a long yeah. time yeah. with consistency and... Um, and so, yes, I try to make sure that I pray with my wife and pray yeah. for her, pray for our family. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's a sweet thing every night when we're literally naming every one of our mm-hmm. kids and grandkids by name, yeah. praying over them, praying God's best for them, that yeah. they'll have a heart for God. And, and, you know, even last night I prayed and it, I, it just came, I don't, it's not something I've been saying, but like last night, I prayed not only for our kids and our grandkids. Gr- yeah. I did. I prayed yes, for generations to come. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, and I was yeah, thinking I needed... a thousand generations, yes, God, yes. you know, that wow. song. It just, yeah. But, yes. So it was, I mean, really, I was thinking about that last night about, mm. wow, what a blessing to think about. Yeah. We're not going to be here forever, but yeah. that our family could still be making Absolutely. an impact. So we do pray together. I now, as she said, uh, every night before we go to bed, I put the coffee on the 
time or it goes off at six o'clock every morning. Um, we're getting old, so we can't sleep late even if we want to, <laughs> right? Like we, <laughs> so, you That's know, good. I usually get out of bed somewhere at 6.30, 6 7 yeah. o'clock. I go down, get some coffee, yep. bring it up, and we do. We get to sit there and kind of ease into our day and read yeah. the Word and um, you know, I write those devotions and yeah. so I'll sometimes read her my devotion or she'll tell me about a scripture she's looking at. So yeah, it's, yeah. that's really a big part of our relationship and very important. Hey friends, just interrupting this conversation. We want you to join us for something good Friday. Let's start the weekend strong by filling everyone's feed with all kinds of good things. To join us, just create a story or a post on your social pages sharing something good. It can be anything. Just make sure to tag now that's something good so we can see it and we can share too. And you never know when we will pick one of you to send a little something good to. So make sure to join us for Something Good Fridays on Instagram and Facebook. Now back to our conversation. So Ron, for just a second, I'm going to ask both of you this, but I want you to talk to the ladies listening who are maybe married and either younger and they're still dealing with a husband who is maybe all in it for themselves or they're in the kids stage of life where it is just you're wrangling kids all day and it's exhausting Yeah. or people that are in the same life. What would you say to the women listening to just encourage them how they can nicely and respectfully encourage their husbands to lead the way in some of the spiritual or praying for each other? Or what would you just say to them? Yeah, well, first of all, you said two key words, and that's nicely and respectfully. Yeah. So there's no I dude on, on the purpose. planet that wants his <laughs> yeah. wife to badger him about yeah. something, right? Yeah. Like there's no like no dude is going to be badgered into being yeah. the spiritual head of his house. Yeah. So nicely, that's respectfully, good. I would say patiently, right? Yeah. Like one of the things we said is divorce was never in our yeah. our conversations. I yeah. used to always tell Debbie, if you leave me, I'm coming with you, right? Yeah. So and 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 I would just say, ladies, be patient. And again, your husband ultimately doesn't complete you. Mm-hmm. It's the Lord. And so lean into him and trust him and talk to him yep. about your husband, yep. right? And then figure out how to kindly, graciously mm-hmm. have those conversations with your husband. I mean, Debbie did that with me. Like I said, I didn't pray with her for the longest time. Yeah. And she would every once in a while say, I really wish you would pray with me at night. And then I would do it for a week and then I would stop doing it. Yeah. And then she would come back again and say, it really means a lot when you pray with me. And, you know, finally it's like, hey, knucklehead, <laughs> right? Like, you, you, you know, number one, you're supposed to be doing that biblically. And number two, she's begging you yeah. to do it because yeah. it, that's speaking her love language yeah. when I sit down with her and pray and have those kind of conversations. And mm-hmm. so, but I, but I would say to the ladies, right, um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be too hard on the guys, but I just want to be honest, right? Like I, I think most guys, I don't know if most guys are like me or not. Let me just speak to me. And I think there's a lot of dudes like me. I've always said, this is true, right? Like I went into our marriage. It's like, Hey, if you feed me and we'll keep this PG and end up in the same bed with me every (laughs) night. Yeah, I'm good, and I don't even have to eat, right? Yeah. Like that was my deal, like, <laughs> right? Like we could skip the meal, right? Yes. And and I mean, yes, both and, and most dudes are not much more complex than that, right? And, and so like I, who I am today, and who I was 33 years ago when she married me, I am, yeah, by God's grace, a completely different man, and yeah. my motives and what I want and all that are completely different, but. It's uh, like we're 33 years into this, and I'm yeah. still learning, right? Yeah. How to be the man that God has called me to be for my wife. Yep. And so I would just say, ladies, hang on, pray to Jesus a yeah. lot for your husband, yep. and then strategically at the right time with the right tone of voice, tell him what you need and what yeah. you would like to see. And what, let me say one other thing. So there's this, we use this phrase, right, about being the head of the home. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a pretty intimidating phrase, yeah. honestly. Like yeah. I'm married to Debbie, so yeah, I'm a pastor, but even like Debbie to this very day is way more spiritually mature than I ever thought about being, right? And so to think that I'm going to really lead her like 
you know, so yeah. being, being the head of the home doesn't necessarily mean that you have to know more than your wife knows. Yeah, that's it good. just means you got to step into who Jesus has called you to be. Like yeah. it would mean the world to most wives out there yeah. if their husband would just grab their hand at night and say, hey, let me pray over you and our family mm-hmm. as we go to bed tonight. And even if it's a rough around the edges prayer, yep. not all the right phrases, maybe no scripture verses in it. That would mean the world to your wife. Even if she's more spiritually mature than you, she's been doing it longer. Just grab your wife's hand and look her in the eye and say, I really love you, and I want to pray for us in our home right now. Like I'm just telling dudes like, that would go a long, long way with your <laughs> That's wife. That's good. And, and then maybe, you know, then some of the things that you think are important would come along with that too. Yeah. Not that that's... Anyway, I don't want it to go down that It is a good... Road. But there is right? something on both those sides. Yes. When both people's love tanks yes, are getting absolutely. built, it is a mutually it's beneficial everybody. It's good for everybody. Thing. Debbie, I want you to just speak for a second. So somebody listening who's like, you know what, Ron, Debbie, this is great. You both love Jesus. You're in the same spot. And even though, Ron, it took you a little bit, but I am not married to somebody who loves the Lord or has the same faith belief system that I do. What would you just say to encourage either spouse, male or female, just in that? Um, or even their spouse maybe is a believer, but not actively really building a relationship with Jesus. What would you just say to encourage them in that season right now? First of all, I want to say that I understand that that would be hard and yeah. and that anybody listening on could say, well, it's easy because... Ron loves Jesus, and right. so, and so, I understand how hard that would be. But we've talked how yeah. you know thirty three years. It's not always been that easy, and yeah. and there have been some stages that have not been pretty. And I would just say, we, our love is not based on somebody else. It's based on Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And and so if I'm speaking to Christian women, we love like Jesus. Yeah. And um <clears throat> and we the best thing you can do to change your husband is to love him. Like yeah. Jesus loves yeah, us. That's good. And sacrifice and pour into him and encourage him and and do not talk badly about him mm-hmm. to anyone. I mean yeah. that is just uh, uh, that will never uh w- what uh, Philippians 4:8 says think upon things that are pure and holy mm-hmm. and good and true and if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think on these things. Yeah. And I think women do themselves so much harm when they dwell on the negative and mm-hmm. and I, I, I've been there, so i'm I'm not yeah preaching at anybody. Right. I preach the, I, I have that verse up on my wall and and you know what? um it's it's so easy to pick out faults mm-hmm. w- whether we're talking about marriage or friendships or church or you know across the board, it's so easy to pick out faults. Um, but if we take just a little time, it's it's easy to find yeah. good too. And yeah. I just would say, ladies, look for the good in your husbands and don't dwell on the negative. Yeah. Um, we all have negative. And so if we look for the good, we're going to find good. Yeah. If we're looking for the negative, we're going to find that. So I would just say, love your husband like Jesus loves us full of grace and mercy mm-hmm. and and look for good things. Yeah. Think about those things. I love so. it. So I've got one more question before we have to end our time together. Do you have any, I don't want to cut anybody off, do you have any last things that you just want to share about marriage, relationships, anything else that we didn't touch on that you're like, I want to I wanna make sure to say this? It's okay if you don't, just want to. You got anything? I'm not good on okay. the spot. Well, so I would say two things. Mm-hmm. One, and I'll probably forget the second by the time I say the first. <laughs> <laughs> he did say he yeah, was 60. I, I did. Oh, um, yeah, well, the, the, the first thing I, al- I already said, uh, but I want to say it again, is um, I, I think us realizing that 
we're not the enemy. I'm yeah. not her enemy. That's She's really not good. my enemy. Because I think Satan is so good at that, yeah. right? He gets mm-hmm. you twisted up. Yep. And, and you know, you, you go to your separate corners and you're mad at each yeah. other and you're yeah. like, And he just you know, he's a liar. He is. Yeah. He, he is. He and lies, I mean, he, he, he does exactly what yeah. he says he does. And, and marriage is hard. And then you throw kids in and it's even yeah. harder, right? And it can... It, it can grind you down, and then yep. and Satan catches you when you're vulnerable, and then he makes you start thinking, oh, I can't believe he did that or she did that. Yep. And so I, I think that's just been a really key phrase for me mm-hmm. is to know that I may get mad at her sometimes, mm-hmm. but she's not the enemy, yep. right? And she may get mad at me, but I'm not her enemy. And to, and to start there and to remind myself that and say, okay, what do we need to do to work through this? Because I yep. know... And in her heart of hearts, she loves me and I love her, and yeah. we're determined to make this work. So mm-hmm. look, Satan's got us all messed up. And and by the way, sometimes it like if we have a fight, it takes me a couple days to get there because yeah. my introvert personality, <laughs> when we have a fight, I just shut down. Right. Mm-hmm. Like she wants to sit down and talk it out. And I want to walk out the door and say, I don't want to talk to you now. Yeah. And sometimes I think I don't want to talk to you for a long, long time. <laughs> and then I come to my senses, right? And yes. I realize that's so stupid. And we yeah. didn't, so anyway, just the there we have an enemy, he's mm-hmm. Satan. I'm mm-hmm. not the enemy, she's not the enemy. And then the other thing I, I think that goes right along with that is just um Man, you just got to hang in there. I mean, honestly, yeah. like good marriages don't happen by accident. They're yeah. just a lot of hard work by mm-hmm. yeah. by two Amen. people yeah. that so just true. say, I'm committed to this mm-hmm. and I am not going anywhere. And I don't care how hard it gets and how yeah. ugly it gets and how messy it gets. I'm not going anywhere. I'm committed to making this work and then understand that ultimately it's the God God who gives us the strength to do that and just lean in, yeah. right? And I, I want to go back because you yeah. did ask. I, I did say, you know, advice to ladies that mm-hmm. maybe are dealing with somebody that's very difficult or not a Christian, and I yeah. said, don't talk bad to anybody. And and as I'm thinking, I, I there sometimes you do need to yes. talk and process yes. through things. And so... What I would say is, when you do it, do do it respectfully with s- some wise, yeah. some po- body that you know seeks God mm-hmm. and it's going to speak truth to you, and not just take your side, but is yeah. going to speak truth to you. So sometimes you do need to seek counsel. So yes, I guess I wanted good. to go back to yeah. what I said. I, there are moments in. A marriage that's difficult that yeah. you might need to process. So I'm. That's good. I hope. Yeah, there's I, a difference between back. speaking bad about something and just having to share the details to get the and wisdom say, please, that you need. Yes. yes. Somebody help counsel. speak into Why, this. Counsel. What do I do? How yes. do I handle this? So, and sometimes you do need somebody to just to vent to. And when it's yes. a safe person, they know. You can still love your husband or your wife, and just I need to just tell you it's, though, <laughs> oh, they're on my last nerve today, and I'm going to have to tell you why. I, and, and then when you, I still said love that I'm talking about, yes, don't feel the need to share with a multitude of people yes. all your husband's faults. My husband, <laughs> blah, blah, yeah, yeah, so. that's good. Okay, guys, so the show is called Now That's Something Good. So the very last question I have to ask you guys is, tell me something good. What is just something? It does, there's no. I don't like to tell people because I want to box anybody in to what it is. It can be anything, a product, a movie, a thing, any anything. Well, I'll tell you something good. It's not a product or a movie, but it's yeah, just something fine. good yeah. in my life. I, I'm a papa. I'm a grandpa. That- <laughs> and so, like, I just, it's the greatest thing ever. And it is a it is a reward, uh, the Bible even says, <laughs> right? Like, it's, it's a crown. Like, you get gray hair. It's a crown. Like, if you last for 33 <laughs> years and have kids and then you get grandkids it's a reward and yeah. so the other day Riley was over at my house and she stood in the living room and talked to me for like 35 minutes Aww. and Debbie was downstairs <laughs> and she was just telling me about going to the hockey rink and they have chocolate donuts and pretzels and pizza and the boys <laughs> and seeing somebody out there breaking their stick and literally talked to me for 35 minutes and I was thinking she said more words to me in the last 35 minutes than my boys have all said to Hun, me how cumulatively. How come you don't like it when I talk to you for 35 minutes? I love minutes. it when you talk to me for 35 minutes. And the great thing is, great is question, then, then yeah. um, 
uh, Debbie comes up the stairs and she tried to ask me a question and Riley stuck her finger up in the air and kind of shook it at her. And she's like, no, I talked to Papa. You can't talk to Papa. <laughs> and she's she a told possessive. me to go that's back a, downstairs. Yeah, she did. <laughs> that's awesome. So, you go so downstairs. Now you're competing with your granddaughter for yeah. it. That's a, yeah. It was that's funny. Just, I what's loved good it. in my life is I'm just loving being a I grandpa and my grandkids are just yeah. such a precious gift. I love them all so very much. That's good. Debbie, what about you? What's something good? That is something good for me too. And the next thing that's good for me right now is yeah. that I'm going to leave yes. on Sunday afternoon and spend 10 days with my husband. I love that is something and, good. And uh, it's going to be warm and we're going to be on the beach. That's what I'm talking love about. Love it. So that's something good that coming is up. something good. I love hey, it. Hey, about that. I know you got to shut yeah. this down, but that's something that we do and I'm not saying yeah. everybody no, no, should no, do tell, it, but yeah. like, we do. So our anniversary is February the 6th, yep. so we're a little behind this year. But like every year we try to go away. And and so we do have now we can go away for a week to Florida. We couldn't yeah. always do that. But even yeah. if it was like it, a even night a or night. two here yeah. or there, just like yeah. I, That's I, important. I have always really tried to celebrate our anniversary and yeah. do something like that. And just we kind of... When the kids you know, were little, it might have just been... Uh, uh, you know, going 30 minutes away and staying in a hotel for the night yeah. and just getting some peace of mind. For yes. Us. Yeah. But, but he's sleep. always done that. <laughs> yeah. And that's We've, been great. We always so. try to great. just celebrate our anniversary and just like, hey, we made it yeah. another year. We praise God. <laughs> I think that's good. Time yes. alone is always good. Yep. Well, Ron, Debbie, thank you so much for coming and sharing part of your story today. It's thank been, you, been amazing. Thanks for Thanks. having us. Well, I hope you really enjoyed our conversation, Ron and Debbie, as I did. They're funny, aren't they? I love getting to hear them. If you know Ron and Debbie in real life, I'm sure you enjoyed getting a behind the scenes look into their life. And if you're just meeting Ron and Debbie for the first time, I hope they feel like new friends. They're the real deals we've said. And I love just their open and honesty with us about their relationship. One of my favorite things that Ron reminded us of that I think is so important is that our spouse is not the enemy. How often do we feel like Sometimes we get sideways and we feel like we're fighting against each other, but God created us. He gave us a partner so that we could be a team. And no matter what your relationship is, whether it's a husband, wife, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a mom, dad, just getting that perspective in our heads that, man, this other person, they're not the enemy. And how can I love them more or pour more into them or just really listen? And sometimes that means we got to take a step back for a second, cool off, take a moment and then come back. Remember, hey, we're on the same team and we're for each other. I love that reminder. I know that is something that Will and I need to work on every day in our marriage and our relationship so that it can be the very best. Well, next week, we are going to have bring you the last conversation in our little mini relationship series. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet. You're going to have to be surprised, but I will tell you this. It is a first and now that's something good podcast history. We are going to have a repeat guest. So, I'll leave it to you. You can see if you can figure out who it is, but make sure to join us back here next Wednesday for a brand new episode of Now That's Something Good. And I want to leave you with this. Remember, there is so much good going on around us. Our job is to just keep our eyes open and to be lookers for it, to see it. And you know what? Not only do we have the chance to see some extra good, but we have a chance to share something good. So make sure today, wherever you're at, see how you can see the good a little more more and then share it with somebody else. Be back with you next week.